Welcome once again. This is Pinoco Professional College. And today we're bringing you another lecture on strategic case study. Um, as you may be aware of, we are doing an analysis of the December 2022 past question. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, please do so in order to gain the full picture of what we are discussing. So um, if you haven't subscribed as well, please do so and hit the notification bell. If you have any questions as we go along this discussion, please don't hesitate to drop your questions in the comment section below. So let's, we've talked extensively about Technic um, Limited and we've looked at some of the key things to have looked at um, if we were taking this paper. Um, we've discussed corporate governance in our previous video. Uh, we talked about um, the board and the, how the board is structured. Um, one of the key things that I probably did not mention in the previous video was you know, understanding what's in the company's act. Right. The Companies Act, you need to have a fair understanding of it and some key points in it, especially related to corporate governance. So now let's move on to the next section, which is sourcing and production of cables and wires. Now, anytime you hear sourcing, there are a couple of things that come to mind. Um, some people call sourcing procurement. Some people call it supply chain, whatever you want to call it. So, Sourcing is basically buying raw materials from a supplier, right, in order to produce whatever you're trying to produce. Now, when I hear sourcing, immediately my mind goes to inbound logistics, which is a part of the value chain model, right? So one of the models that we probably or most likely need to understand or know here is the value chain model. It's the value chain model. Now, let's dive into the text. So the two main raw materials used in cable manufacturing, which constitute 70% of the value of inputs are aluminum rod and copper. And both are precious metals, right? So you can see clearly what's happening here, right? You have two main raw materials. Um, these raw materials are critical to the business of Technic, and it's important that they get the right price and quality for them. So that's very, very crucial. Bauxite is used as the main raw material in the manufacture of aluminum. So now we are being told how aluminum itself comes about, and we, are, we know that bauxite is used as the main raw material in the manufacture of aluminum. It is a clay mineral found in tropical and subtropical areas such as Africa, Australia, and the West Indies. Right, so bauxite is not found everywhere. You don't get bauxite, it's a rare commodity um, or it's a limited commodity in specific areas, in tropical areas. So places like Africa, Australia would have, uh, would have bauxite would have bauxite. So fortunately for Technic, Technic is located in a tropical region. And so bauxite can be found in Africa, right? <clears throat> aluminum is obtained from alumina, a compound of aluminum and oxygen, which is processed from bauxite, right? So we get aluminum from bauxite. And if, you know, and what it means is that if anything, if some kind of scarcity comes up with bauxite, then that's going to impact you know, aluminum because aluminum comes from bauxite. The aluminum ingots, which is produced from the alumina, which is then further produced into aluminum rod is one of the main raw materials used in cables and wires manufacturing. So like we already, mentioned, right? You have bauxite, you have aluminum um, coming from bauxite, and that's used to produce, it's one of the main raw materials used to produce cables and wires. Of the two main raw materials, aluminum rod is largely sourced here locally in Ghana, which with backup foreign supplies when there's disruption 
in the local supply chain, right? We can clearly see that um, for aluminum rod, um, aluminum rod is locally sourced, like it comes from Ghana. And uh, if there's any disruption in the supply chain, it, you know, backup foreign supplies are received. So there's a plan B in case the local sourcing fails. While copper is strictly imported. So now, as you go through this, you need to understand what the dependencies here are. Right? You need to understand what the dependencies here are. You can realize that, um, for instance, for instance, um, one of the key things you realize here is that copper is imported. Copper is imported. And then when something is imported, um, it's subject to risks, right? So there are all kinds of risks, exchange rate risk, currency risk, all kinds of risk would impact um, these importations, right? Because whatever happens in the country that you are importing from affects you as a company, right? So one of the key things you want to assess looking at all these dependencies and raw materials is around the risks associated. Right. Very, very important. Very, very, very important. So Ghana is rich in bauxite, right? So fortunately for Technic, Ghana has a lot of bauxite and has huge reserves at Takwa, Ninahin, Kibi, and Kibi in the Western Ashanti and Eastern regions of Ghana respectively. Right, so in if you go to the western, you go to the Ashanti, you go to the eastern region. Yeah, it's rich in bauxite. It's rich in bauxite. Now, what comes to mind here is usually organizations would pitch their tent close to, you know, close to areas where they can easily get their raw materials. Close to areas where they can easily get their raw materials. So. So for example, if an organization can get, you know, cheap labor in you know, some kind of country, right? They might relocate the operations there, right? We are not told that this has been done, but since these regions, Takwa, Ninehi, and Kibi are very rich in bauxite, um, I, I don't know if it's part of the strategy of um, Technic to, at least um, have you know, some kind of office there to take advantage of this scarce resource. So the sole producer of aluminum ingot in Ghana is the Volta Aluminum Company Limited, which is Valco, right? So Valco is the sole producer of aluminum ingots in Ghana, which is interesting, right? So it means that if you want to get aluminum the aluminum ingots from Valco, from a supply has it to be Valco, right? So it is, so you literally have um, one supplier to go with. And I'm sure you might be wondering what the word ingots means. So ingots basically means a simply a block of a particular metal, a block of a particular metal. So it could be a block of steel, a block of gold, a block of silver. All right, so an aluminum ingot is simply a block of aluminum. Right, a block of aluminum. So, I hope that makes sense. And when I say a block, I see it simply means that it's a, it's basically a piece of aluminum, which is, which is you know cast into a shape that is suitable for further processing. All right. So an ingot has a bar-like shape. You know the way you have um, chocolate bars or soap bars or key soap bars. It has that kind of bar shape. So that's an ingot. So just for your knowledge. So the sole producer of aluminum ingots is Valco. 
right? So, I mean, if there's a sole, pro if there's a sole producer, then Technic obviously needs to have a good relationship with this producer, right? Or, you know, would you want to de depend on only one producer? Technic has to think of ways that they can find alternate suppliers or generate, you know, aluminum themselves some way, right? Valco, however, cannot meet the demands of the industry. And so the shortfall in local supply is imported. So you see, um, you know, Valco is the only one pro producing all the aluminum ingots. So it cannot meet the demands of the industry. It cannot meet the demands of the industry, which is, you know, which is not surprising, right? And how the shortfall is met is through imports, is through imports. Now, there's one thing I probably did not talk, I'm sure I touched on it briefly, but um, I would like to bring to your attention, anytime you're analyzing a case and that has a lot to do with, um, that has a lot to do with what a country is good at. Right, what a country is good at producing. Anytime you see signs of that, always remember the Porter's diamond. Always remember the Porter's diamond. The Porter's diamond simply me measures national competitiveness. National competitiveness. So, as we've talked about in previous lectures, the Porter's diamond has four dimensions. The first dimension is factor conditions. The second, when we say factor condition, we are talking about input conditions, right? Input conditions with so the raw materials. That's what we are looking at here. Then you are looking at the second dimension is called demand conditions. Demand conditions. Um, the third dimension is called the firm strategy structure and rivalry. The firm strategy structure and rivalry. And the last one is related and supporting industry. So these are the four dimensions. Always keep these four things in mind. Please keep these four things in mind. Very, very important, right? So when we talk about factor conditions, and I just need to chime this in because it's one of the most important models. When we talk about factor conditions, you are looking at natural resources, right? So in this case, for Ghana, it's bauxite. You are looking at human resource. You are looking at scientific knowledge. You are looking at technological innovation. All these are input conditions, raw materials that a, count, a country might have um, that makes it competitive compared to others. You have demand conditions, right? When you look at demand conditions, you are looking at the size of the domestic market. The size of the domestic market, right? So, for example, if you look at China, China has a population of well, probably over a billion, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a huge um, market. That's a huge market, right? And then we talked about firm strategy, structure, and rivalry, which is the third dimension. And it explains itself here. You are looking at the company strategies. You are looking at the organization structure. You are looking at the competition or rivalry between local firms. Right. That's what we are referring to. All these things determine national competitive advantage. Then the last point was around related and supporting industries, which is, um, if I'm explaining that, or um, given an example on that. Let me explain it first and give an example. All right, so here we are looking at industries that support or drive, you know, industries that support or drive other related industries, right? So if you go to America, for instance, um, you see related and supporting industries in Silicon Valley. So in Silicon Valley, they have, you know, it's that a tech hub, but they also have other 
strong research industries there. We also have strong academic institutions there. Just these are all related and supporting industries to drive the tech and growth. I hope that makes sense. So that's me touching on the Porter's Diamond. I thought I, I will chime that in very quickly. Um, and it's important to understand how that model works. Now let's go on to the next paragraph. I mean, if you have any questions, you can drop it in the comment section and I'll definitely attend to it, attend to it. Currently, Valco production process, as far as cable manufacturing is concerned, is concerned, as far as cable manufacturing is concerned, terminates with aluminum ingots. So all Valco does is to just produce the aluminum ingots. And I told you that the ingots is basically, um, it's basically like um, a block of aluminum, right? That requires further processing. I always remember that. So the ingots requires further processing, you see? The ingots requires further processing to transform it into aluminum rod, which is then used in conjunction with copper to produce various cables. Don't forget that the copper is imported. The aluminum rod to, you get it from aluminum ingots, but you have to process it to get that. It is this gap that the founding CEO of TCWL sought to fill by setting up SRL. Prior to this, the aluminum rods were imported and since the lead time between placing the order and receiving the rod in Ghana was approximately two months, all the industry players had to make massive investments in inventory, right? So it's very, very crucial. Very, very crucial. So we are being told here that you know there's a some kind of gap between placing an order and receiving a, the actual rod in Ghana. It's, it takes literally two months. So to solve this problem, there's huge investments in inventory, which might not necessarily be the best idea. TCWL and the Two other competitors depend on SRL for the supply of aluminum rods since its establishment. This has come as a major relief for industry players in terms of the shorter lead time. Further, the rod supplied by SRL is priced in Ghana cities. You see, what we are talking about in terms of when you're importing things, you know, exchange rate impacts also influences. And so that's very, very important to note as well. Very, very important to note. Right. So let's move on. <clears throat> let's move on. So we are being told here that um, the road supplied by SRL is priced in Ghana cities with limited fluctuation in the price compared to frequent changes witnessed on the London Metal Exchange the main trading market for precious metals on which cable manufacturers depend for price quotation. There are occasions when the two competitors would usually fall on the foreign sources for the road when SRL shuts down for maintenance or when there's a breakdown of plants awaiting repairs by foreign engineers. Same cannot be said of TCWL, whose supply is guaranteed even when SRL is not working. So it, SRL has alleviated some of the pain of the industry because um, first of all, the price, their pricing is in CVN. They also give a reasonable supply of aluminum rods, which is used for the cables. Right. The only problem is that um, SRO will sometimes shut down for maintenance. And, um, you know, that sort of breaks down the whole production process, breaks down the whole production process. So there are a lot of things, um, if I'm analyzing this, there are a lot of things that will be coming to mind as I analyze it. The strategic role of SRL and how to, you know, make sure that it continues to operate 
for the success of TCWL. It's very, very important. All right, so please remember the Porter's Diamond. Please remember Porter's Five Forces. Please remember the Pestle Framework and many other models that we've mentioned as we've gone through this case. The other main material for the production of cables and wires, which is even more important than aluminum rod is copper. Right. Remember that copper is imported. Ghana does not have copper. Therefore, the cable manufacturing industry depends on imports to satisfy their requirements. As of September 2022, LME, which is the London Metal Exchange, quoted a three-month contract for copper and aluminum at $7,400 and 2,130 per ton, respectively. A year ago, the copper price per ton was 9,370, while that of aluminum was 2,602. Right, so you can clearly see that the prices of copper and aluminum fluctuate. Some go up, go, go down, go up, so that's one of the things that must be managed. So here you'll be thinking of things around forward contracts, right? Futures, future contracts, just to um lock in rates at the time of agreement so that in case um prices change, you are not exposed as a company. So one major feature about the world market prices of these two metals is the significant fluctuation. So you see. These prices fluctuate month to month. And I'm sure COVID has even made it a lot, lot worse. So the immediate post-COVID-19 supply disruption resulting in demand outstripping supply and pushing the prices very high are easing gradually. Okay. So um seems things are getting better after the whole COVID pandemic. There's no alternative to aluminium, but copper has an alternative in the form of fiber. Historically, fiber has been more expensive than copper, and this trend is not expected to change. So aluminum has no alternative. Copper has an alternative, but it's an expensive alternative. Right? It's an expensive alternative. Any questions so far on this? If there are any questions, just let me know. Please drop your questions in the comments, and I'll definitely answer answer them. So, so this is how you approach analyzing a case, right? You ask yourself questions, look at the strategic implications, and, you know, basically put yourself in the company shoes and analyze it like you're the CEO of the company, right? So, so looking at all these numbers, you know, the prices of aluminum, the prices of copper. I'm keen to see how the PL or the financials of the company looks like. You know, I'm very keen to see how it looks like because if you are having these fluctuations, then you know it's it's important to manage your risk in that regard. Manufacturing process of cables and wires and overall quality objectives. That's the next section. Right. To forestall any potential shortages and disruptions in meeting customer needs, the company stocks on average three months copper compared to two months on the average by their competitors. Right. So here yeah, we are straight, we are looking into inventory management. Inventory management. Now, inventory management is something that you need to understand going into the exams, going into the exams. So stock management or inventory management is one of the key things to, um, to know. So there are different inventory management techniques. There's the just-in-time inventory management technique. There's the materials requirement planning technique. There's the economic order quantity, EOQ. I'm sure you might have heard of that. And there's also the day sales of inventory. Now, 
let's look at what just in time is. Obviously, they are not for technique here, they are not using just in time, right? But these are the main types of inventory. Um, I'll probably touch on it briefly. I'll touch on it briefly and then um, you can go and read extensively on it. So when you're looking at just in time, just in time, um, just in time is basically an inventory management system which is driven by demand, right? So you don't stock things on the shelf for the sake of stocking things on the shelf. You only buy raw materials when there's uh, you know, an obvious demand for it, an obvious demand for it. So that's just in time. You know, the name suggested just in time. So you deliver just in time, right? So you buy your raw materials just in time. That's that's what it, mean, it basically means. Mm -hmm. So you you receive goods from suppliers only as they are needed, right? You are not just stocking things and stocking things. Right? In this case, Technic is doing that because um, they want to forestall any potential shortages. Right? On the other hand, the company does not stock aluminum rod as it has a service level agreement with its subsidiary, SRL, to supply directly to production as and when necessary. Right? So they are stocking copper, right? And why are they stocking copper? They are stocking copper because when copper is imported, the prices fluctuate. And so um, sometimes possibly it could get, there could be shortages and disruptions. So they are stocking it to protect themselves. This arrangement does not apply to its two competitors who have to stock sufficient aluminum rod to meet two weeks production. But they, because obviously SRL is a subsidiary of Technic, um, they are able to have like some kind of agreement with them to supply them aluminum rod. The production process is highly automated with minimal manual intervention. This is attributable to high investment made in plants and machinery. Cable production process starts with pulling the copper and aluminum rod through a series of synthetic diamond dyes, which gradually decrease in size on the draw bench. Right. So yeah, we are being told how the production process is undertaken. Right, so remember that when you are trying to understand the value chain model, you know that you have inbound logistics, right? You have outbound logistics. Remember, always remember the value chain, the value chain. Let me just touch on the key points on the value chain. So you have inbound logistics, you have operations, you know, which is where you convert your raw materials into finished products. You have outbound logistics, you have marketing and sales, you have service, and then you have some support activities, which is procurement, right? Remember that there was a whole section dedicated towards sourcing, right? So procurement, you have HR. In this case, we've been told a lot about the people the people being a critical factor in the success of Technic. You have technological development and you have infrastructure. So please keep this in mind. So these are the stages that, so you, the system, so it basically tells us what the process is like. It says, this is done with a lubricating and cooling system that increases the life of the dyes and prevents the wire from overheating. The next stage is to draw the copper or aluminum that has been taken through the first stage during the drawing process. Tremendous pressure is applied on metal rod to form a thinner wire. The wire at this stage must be extremely brittle and can easily be fractured if flexed. The finished wire must be flexible. So in this step, the wire is softened or is annealed. Annealing is accomplished by heating the wire to its recrystallization to temperature for a period of time. The key here is to avoid oxidation of the wire, right? So that's basically the process. Now, when we talk about um, oxidation, 
it's a, it's it's just um it's just a big word. When we talk about oxidation, um, to just make it simple for you, is basically um is basically gaining oxygen, right? So if, if you are trying to avoid oxidation of the wire, you are trying to stop the wire from gaining oxygen, right? The third stage involves twisting and stranding. At this stage, two or more wires of the same gauge are twisted or stranded together using a proprietary formula to determine twist length. So as I'm going through these operational activities, I'm wondering what can we do to improve this? You know, are some of these things done manually? Is there a machine that could do this and save time and do it quickly and efficiently? Right. It says this is done between, this is done because given the same cross-sectional area, stranded wire has better flexibility and electrical performance than single wire. The next stage is referred to as extrusion. The wire, now soft and flexible, is passed to an extruder where the coating of plastic or other insulating materials are applied. Materials are poured into the rear part of the extruder and are pushed forward while heated into melt. So it, it's basically telling us the process. Now, throughout this process, because wires are very, very, um, it's very, very delicate and critical, quality should be paramount here. Yeah, quality should be paramount. So I would want to look into quality. You know, this quality, are quality standards being maintained here. Now we have been told that the final stage is cabling, which involves preparing the basic component of the cable. The cable is assembled according to different utilities, and the process is done in the cabling station. For the electrical and electronic cables in daily use, um, one or more strands of wires are wrapped up together with interference preventing life needed into the pro protection jacket. In order to have a better forming degree, a filler is used to ensure the finished cable is in a round shape. So all this is talking about process, process, operations. Very, very crucial. Very, very important. So um, I'm sure you are realizing a lot of things here and you are seeing how this whole entire process links to you know, the value that Technic as an organization is trying to create or wants to create, right? And that's why the value chain model is very, very crucial. So we are being told here that throughout the above process, a robust quality management system is enforced. See, I, we talked about this, right? Quality is key here. The company's quality management system for inspecting, monitoring, and testing ensures conformity of the product to specified requirements. To ensure continuous delivery of quality cables, the company has a world-class testing lab, which is staffed with technical experts. And the lab has been licensed by the Ghana Standards Authority and has always passed the test. So that's a good thing. That's a really, really important thing to have um, to have um, a lab that tests and ensures that these cables are of good, of great quality. Very, very important. Very, very important. So um, there are a few things that I need to touch on here. Um, I need to touch on the last paragraph. It says the company also maintains quality policy. Quality policy by committing to excellence in the manufacture and marketing of cables. Right, so here we are still talking about the whole quality um, issue, right? The whole quality issue. So if you look at quality, um, I will try and understand quality assurance. I'll try and understand quality management. I will try and understand what quality entails, right? 
of quality and sales. So he says the company utilizes the best available human machinery and material resources to manufacture cables efficiently. And the company satisfies and complies with requirements related to the industry. And it continually monitors and analyzes customer feedback. So that's very, very crucial. So basically we are getting the sense that there's some kind of continuous improvement strategy here to ensure that um, to ensure that um, quality quality is maintained. Now let's look at the products of TCW. Now before we talk about products, I always remember the four piece, which is um, uh, if you remember the four piece of marketing, right? Of the marketing mix. So if you want to look at the four piece, the four piece is basically telling you of the product, the price, place, and promotion. Yeah, we are being told of the products, right? So the company currently offers eight products to diversified customers. These products have performed variedly within the market and sold both local and foreign markets. So these are the products you have. You have overhead line cables, you have building wiring cables, you have high pressure cables, you have control cables, you have telecom cables, you have solar cables, you have accessories, and then you have PVC granules. So, Let's look at each of these. So the first one, overhead line cables. These are cables used in transmission of high voltage power from the point of generation to the transformer for subsequent distribution to the end consumer. Right. So it's important to understand um, each of the each, each of these products and the value that these products are offering. So you have overhead line cables. You have building wiring cables, which is domestic and commercial. These are used for wiring all kinds of cable, all kinds of buildings. You have high pressure cables. Um, these are cables that are usually buried underground and they transmit power from transformer to commercial buildings and industrial facilities. You have control cables. So the case is literally telling you exactly what each of these cables do, right? Obviously, the telecom cables would be used for the tele telecommunication industry for voice and internet connectivity. You have the solar cable host, which is to connect the solar system power. You have accessories like sockets, switches, and lighting fittings. And you have the PVC, which is polyvinyl chloride. You know. And I'm sure you've seen these PVC granules. They are used for insulating and serve as a sheathing to right stands for insulating so see pipe fittings garden hoses cable coatings plumbing parts you know very very important so for the pvc granules we are being told here that tcw currently focuses on producing pvc granules for cables industry in ghana and west africa the demand is generally high as it's tied to the production of various cables. So for PVC granules, the demand is high. Right? So this is a place where, you know, technic can make a lot of money, right? Make a lot of money. So I'm, the questions I ask myself around products, uh, you know, first of all, I would like to ask, you know, what kind of, you know, what pro products produces the most revenue, right, to Technic or TCW? What product provides the most revenue and why? What product costs Technic the most to produce and why? And can we have any efficiencies in doing them? And also, my other question would be around, um, the demand, what's the demand for each of these products, right? What's the demand for each of these products? So these are some questions I'd ask in relation to products. Obviously the cardinal principle underlying the production of all these products is safety and quality. Safety and quality, because generally 
I'm sure the market or some customers will be very skeptical about the quality of cables on the market, right? Because you know, cables are very delicate and you do not want the firehouse break just because you bought a cheap, low quality cable. So quality should be one of the prime things when it comes to this But I'm keen to know the numbers around each and every of these products. I think this is where we would bring this to an end today. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, in our next section, we'll be talking about the distribution. Uh, distribution is another P in the four P's of the marketing mix, which talks about place. When you talk about place, you are talking about markets, you are talking about channels, you are talking about distribution. So we'll try and understand the distribution of products and marketing. Very important. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. Um, thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.